we're here. And I remember that it was about two years ago that the Lord allowed me to see that the crisis was going to begin in 2008. And everywhere we went, we began to start preaching that an economical crisis was going to come beginning in 2008. Then there's a reason why. When you understand the economy, when you understand how it works, we are at the beginning of this crisis and nothing that the government can do can fix it. And you know what it's leading to? You see, in order for Satan to introduce his new economy where no man can buy or sell, you know what has to happen to this old one? It has to crumble. It's going to collapse. I promise you, before it happens, I tell you, so that when it happens, you might believe this whole economy is going to crumble. And God has given us some things that we should be doing before that economy crumbles. He's given us some things that we should be doing in preparation for this to take place because I'm going to tell you something. When that economy crumbles, do you know what's going to happen in the cities? Do you know how rough it is going to be in the cities at that time? When people don't have food, you know what they're going to start doing? We're told that soon men will wish they could leave the cities, but they will not be able to. They're going to be dying then, wanting to get out. It is going to be a terrible crisis right now today. There are army troops that have come back from overseas to come back here because they say there may be some civil unrest in the near future. I don't think we understand where we are, brothers and sisters. Jesus said, if only we knew we're surrounded and we don't even know it. And with tears in his eyes, he said, how many are going to get ready? How many are going to take it serious? How many are just going to go back home and cut on their television? How many are just going to go back home and say, I don't care. I'm going to live how I've always been living. I'm going to eat what I want to eat, do what I want to do, continue to live my same old life. And this is some of the last opportunities of salvation. And God, he's not going to force us. You know that, right? He's not going to force us to make any change. He's going to say, if you love me, if you love me, well, you do what I say. And those that love Jesus, they're going to say the Bible, they're going to see what he says, and they say, whatever you say, Lord, whatever you say in the details of my daily life, whatever I eat or drink or whatever I do, whatever you tell me, Lord, I want to follow. And those people are going to go on to become members of that movement that are going to give the final loud cry. And the world is going to hear it, but it's only going to be a remnant. And I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of that, don't you? Is there anything more important than that? Oh, my brothers and sisters, we don't have long. We have come to this distress of nations. And when this gives way, it's going to give way to the son in law and to the seven last plagues. Everything has happened. You remember, after 1833, the stars, when it fell, it seemed as if God had been holding back for the sealing work. But this distress of nations cuts short the rest of that work, and it continues as follows. Then, it says, distress of nations, powers of heaven to be shaken, it's over then. We in 2008, we're coming to the end of God being able to hold it back. This is the event that is going to cause everything else to follow in this suit. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, I promise you, upon the authority of the word of God and the testimony of God's spirit, this is the final generation. This is the final issue that's going to lead to the National Sunday Law. And if ever there was a time to get ready, that time is now. Is there someone here that says, Lord, I want to be ready? I know I need special prayer. Tonight, I'm impressed. I'm going to say this tonight as we close. If there's someone that wants special prayer tonight, I'm going to stay back by so that I can pray with you. Amen? If there's some young person, you may have a struggle in your life, you know, if we would just be honest with God, God can help us. All we have to do is say, Lord, I don't like the Bible. Lord, I'm bored with you. Lord, I love sin. Because you know he knows that. Naturally, we don't love Jesus. 
It is a supernatural work that changes us to love what we formerly hated. Do you know that? And all we have to do is ask for the love of Jesus. You know love makes a difference. You know that, right? When you really love God, he will start causing you to enjoy it. If there's someone here that says, Lord, I need the help of Jesus. And I just want special prayer that God would do something in my heart, in my life, my family. So when this crisis breaks, I'll be ready. If there's someone like that here tonight, would you just raise your hand? Praise God. Praise God. Would you reverently kneel with me as we close? Oh, Father, you have been with us tonight. You're making it clear, Lord, that all these signs have come to pass just as you said they would. Everything in this world is ready. Even the Orion is opening, Lord, for your coming. Everything is ready but us. And it's a shame, Lord, that while the Orion is opening, that some people's hearts are closing to Jesus Christ. And Lord, if we don't let you into our hearts, we will never be ready. This is the purpose of prophecy. So that the day dawn, the day star, Jesus Christ can arise in our hearts. And you're standing at the door knocking. It doesn't matter how terrible our life has been. If we but open the door, if we but come, we can be saved. Oh, this is the power of your blood, Lord. And I pray that you'll speak to every heart. That you'll remove the desire for worldliness. Truly, Lord, we know that because of sin, we are a generation that loves pleasure more than we love God. Lord, we can spend hours even into midnight playing games. But Lord, sometimes we don't spend that much time talking to you. And Lord, we just want to ask you to forgive us. We just want your love tonight, Lord, because the only thing that can make a difference is your love. Be with every kneeling soul, be with every youth and adult, and we pray that as a result of these meetings, that as a result of opening our hearts to you, that we might be saved. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus, for the work of angels, and that very soon we'll be able to spend an eternity with thee. Thank you, Lord. May not one in this room be lost. May not one listening to the sound of my voice, and may not one in the overflow, no matter where we are, may not one of us be lost, Lord. And while I preach the truth to others, Lord, help me to keep under my body, keeping my eyes on you because there's no merit in preaching if I don't know you, Lord. Be with all of us. And we thank you for this. Bring us back out tomorrow night, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. For your homework, I want you to read through that book of James 5. James chapter 5. Read through that chapter. I want you to read through it. I want you to then take with that and just read again Revelation 13 verses specifically 11 through 17. What was the two, what was the two passages? James 5 and Revelation 13. What verses? 11 through 15 and as a family, just pray together and individually and just say, Lord, what is in my life that does not need to be there? And what is in my life that needs to be there? Amen. If you will talk to God personally about that, God will tell you things that no man could ever tell you. God may tell you something that no man would be able to tell you, but just ask him, Lord, is there anything in my life that was, be, was keeping me from Jesus? And let's come back tomorrow night and let's get ready to have a good time. Amen. Let's study, let's pray, let's prepare, let's get ready for the coming of Jesus. You may consider yourself dismissed. <laughs>